Number 31. When a 0.74 gram sample of trinitrotoluene, which is TNT, so an explosive, aka C7H5N206, when this is burned in a bomb calorimeter, the temperature increases from 23.4 degrees Celsius to 26.9 degrees Celsius. The heat capacity of the calorimeter is 534 joules per degree Celsius, and it contains 675 mils of water. How much heat was produced by the combustion of TNT sample? Okay. So definitely we're, we're doing a heat problem, right? We're in calorimetry. They're giving us all these hot words. They're giving us heat capacity. They're giving us bomb calorimeter. So I need to do the special equation for bomb calorimetry. Now, just know that bomb calorimetry is a more heavy duty type of calorimetry in which they produce much more amounts of energy, and generally bomb calorimeters are used for combustion. So this organic molecule, TNT, is burned. That's combustion. Anytime that you have a hydrocarbon and you're burning it in oxygen, that's combustion. That's what bomb calorimeters do. So I, I notice two things here, okay? I notice that I have to work with the bomb calorimeter, and in the bomb calorimeter, there is water. When that happens, you have heat produced from the bomb calorimeter, and you have heat produced from the water. So we have a reaction here, guys. The equation that we're going to use is this one. And maybe I'll just put this over here. We need to find the total amount of heat aka the total big Q. We need to find the heat specifically from the water, and we need to find this heat specifically from the bomb calorimeter. So there's two different formulas that we got to work here, guys. I put it down at the bottom. We're going to find the, the heat from the bomb calorimeter by doing C times delta T. That's the formula you guys got to know. And then we've been using this one throughout this chapter, right? MS delta T. So I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll do the one that we know you know, we've been doing all along, right? Well, let's find the heat of the water. So MS delta T. Now they told me that the water was 675 mils. And remember the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So whatever the milliliters are, that's how many grams you have. So I really have 675 grams of water. Water is the only, uh, compound that we need to memorize the specific heat for, right? So technically we know that S value because we memorized it for water. It's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And now the Delta T, the change in temperature, remember Delta T is final temperature minus initial temp. They told us that it increased from 23.4 degrees Celsius to 26.9 degrees Celsius. So technically, the final temperature is the 26.9 subtracted from the 23.4, right? Final minus initial. So calc's out, let's just do that calculation. 26.9 minus 23.4. So my delta T here, is 3.5 degrees Celsius. All right, let's find out the heat just from the water. So Q of the H2O would be 675 times 4.184 times 3.5. When I do my calculations, I don't put in units because I already checked that I have the right units beforehand, so it just you know kind of makes it a little easier. So the heat produced just coming from the water, 675 times 4.184 times 3.5, I get 9,884.7. Now I'm not gonna round because that's not the answer that I'm looking for in full, right? This is just the heat of the water. So as of right now, I'm just gonna say, okay, this was 9884.7 joules. 
Now we gotta find the cue of the bomb. And that is this one. So maybe I'll put the maybe I'll put the formula over here. Now, the heat of the bomb calorimeter is just you need two things. We need the delta T, which we know already. We know that it's 3.5. So that was easy. And C, remember, is the heat capacity. That's capital C. They told us that the heat capacity of the calorimeter was 534 joules per Celsius. So we know that number. Oop. So now all we got to do is just calculate the, the heat coming just from the bomb calorimeter. So it'd be 534 times 3.5. So let's see. So 534 times 3.5, I got 1869 joules. So that's the heat coming just from the bomb. So now we found the two components. Let's find out what the total amount is, right? So this is now 1869 joules. And all we gotta do is just add them together. Look at that. So 9,884.7 plus the 18.69. And finally, we get the Q of the reaction. Let's see. 9884.7 plus 1869. I'm looking back here, I see that everything is in three sig figs, so this is a lot of joules. So I can either say that it's 1.18 times 10 to the, let's see, one, two, three, fourth, and that would be in joules. Maybe I'll just bring this over a little bit. So 1.18 times 10 to the fourth joules, or if you want to um, convert this into kilojoules, all you gotta do is divide by a thousand, and then it should just be 11.8, basically, kilojoules. There you go. So, not bad, guys. Just know that when you're dealing with bomb calorimetry, just check to see if it is, you know, is with water because then you have to add that heat. The thing is, is that even though they told you that it was a 0.74 gram sample of TNT, that has nothing to do with the calculation for finding how much total heat it is. All right? So thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. That will help us out tremendously. Thank you so much, and good luck on all your tests and quizzes. Good luck in any other classes that you have, math, foreign language, social studies. Good luck, all right? I will be talking to you soon. All right, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.